This is the MedicCast Podcast Extra Slideshow. We'll be looking at the pediatric assessment triangle and some of the things that it can do to help you in your assessment of pediatric patients. So what are we talking about when we look at the pediatric assessment triangle? First of all, it's something you're going to use in your initial assessment, and it's easy to use It's before you even get to the patient. It's non-invasive. You don't even actually touch the patient when using the pediatric assessment triangle, and that's one of the things that makes it so amazingly valuable for assessing pediatric patients, especially those very young patients who have a lot of stranger anxiety as part of their normal development. It's non-threatening because you can do it from a distance, from across the room, without ever approaching these patients, and it's really easy to do. No, I'm serious. It really is. The pediatric assessment triangle is based on you using three variables to determine whether you have a sick or a not sick patient. And by sick or not sick, we really mean critical or not critical. Is this a patient that you're going to be really loading and running with, or is this somebody you can stay and play with, that, that old adage. But in pediatric assessment triangle terms, it's sick or not sick. The three variables are appearance, work of breathing, and circulation. And these are the three things you can actually assess very well without ever getting too awful close to the patient and before you start using your stethoscope or actually hands-on inspecting patient injuries. So let's look at appearance first of all. Appearance uses the acronym TICKLES. And TICKLES refers to tone, interactiveness, consolability, look or gaze, and speech or cry. And these are the things you can look at from across the room. You're looking at their appearance and their general interacting with the environment, their, their tone. You know, how, are they, how are they responding to their uh, providers? If they're sitting with their mother and this comes to consolability, they're, they're interacting with their environment. They notice you when you walk into the room. Are they easily consoled? Is mom able to calm them down? When they look at you, are they, did their, does their gaze seem vacant? Are they actually making eye contact and appear to be looking at differences around the room? You know, in a very young child, in a, in a nine-month-old, 12-month-old uh, toddler, you know, you walk in the room with all of your equipment, they are going to pay attention to you. And if they're not, that's an indication that something's wrong. Also, their speech or their cry. Are they using appropriate words for their age? Are, is their cry extreme and seems pained and, again, inconsolable. These are things you can look at. What about work of breathing? Well, work of breathing is something else you can look at across the room. You can watch their rate of breathing. You can see what they're doing. Is their rate very, very fast? Even in pediatric patients, too fast breathing is a sign of problems. What's their positioning? Are they tripoding? You know, in a young asthmatic patient, are they having to sit upright? Are they supporting their shoulders and trying to expand the rib cage by propping forward on their arms? Do you visualize retractions, uh, supersternal retractions, re retractions if their shirt's off, retractions in the intercostal spaces or along the clavicles? You can see that nasal flaring, anxiety while they're breathing. Are they very anxious and upset and seem like they can't catch their breath? You can see all of this when you enter the room. Finally, circulation. Circulation looks at just your general patient color. Things like cyanosis. Are they pale in color, ashen, or mottled? These are the things you're going to be looking for in these patients to see if there is indeed the onset of shock occurring. Remember, pediatric patients plateau and maintain their compens compensatory mechanisms for a long time. And when they do that, the problem is that when they get to the inability to compensate stage, they crash very rapidly. Rather than that slow downward slope you see in adults, you actually see a straight line and then a cliff in that graph. And we really want to make sure we get a head start on any signs of shock. And you can see that when you look at their skin color. So let's review real quick. 
You want to assess these patients when you come into the room. You can look at them as you walk up to them and do this review very quickly. You can actually look at all three aspects. You're going to be looking at their appearance, how they interact with their environment, are they consolable, is their cry extreme, do they use appropriate speech for their age, these kind of things. How hard are they breathing, what's their rate, are they working hard, are they tripoding or using some other position to compensate, are they very anxious. And finally, circulation. We were looking, we're looking here at their color, their skin color. Are they cyanotic? Are they pale or mottled? Or in dark skinned persons, ashen in appearance. These things can all lead you to believe and determine whether this child is sick or not sick. And that is the purpose of the pediatric assessment triangle. You'll find more information like this over at MedicCast.com and, of course, in the MedicCast Extra program that's available for those that subscribe as well. References are available, as always. You'll find links on the website, and you can also follow these links here.